diligently worked and to strive for a world where diplomacy triumphs over discord and peace prevails over conflict. Together, let us draw strength from their example as we continue to confront the challenges of our time with courage and determination. May their sacrifices never be forgotten and may their legacy continue to inspire future generations of diplomats and development professionals to serve our country with honor, integrity, and abiding sense of public service. I now ask that everyone in the audience please stand as the United States Armed Services Color Guard presents the colors. Thank you. Please join me in our colleagues and U.S. embassies and consulates around the world as we observe a moment of silence, then followed by our national anthem. Thank you. Finally, I ask that all of you remain standing while the United States Armed Services Color Guard retires the colors. Thank you. I now invite Deputy Secretary Verma to the podium. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Tom, thank you. Thank you to AFSA and for your continuing stewardship of the Memorial Wall, whose names, places, and dates serve as a continuing reminder of the risks of any diplomatic mission. This wall also reminds us that it is not in the bloodstream of foreign affairs professionals to walk away from a challenge. Rather, this is a diplomatic corps that has always been moved by the courage of its convictions to go out in the world on behalf of America, doing whatever it can to build global norms that reject evil, encourage freedom, and promote a more peaceful and just world. 
President Biden recognized this when he visited the department at the beginning of his term, acknowledging it is, quote, the leadership of diplomats of every stripe doing the daily work of engagement that created the very idea of a free and interconnected world. We are a country that does big things, and American diplomacy makes it happen. The president was right. Diplomats do make it happen. But it is also a profession that comes with the risks of going into the world into all sorts of situations. That is why when you walk by these walls, you see many of the sacrificed honored here are due to violence, but there are also those that pass tragically due to natural disasters or disease. It is a chilling reminder that the dangers of the world have always been rooted in science, economics, and nature, just as much as they are rooted in politics and violence. In our interconnected age, we wonder if this could become even near, more true. I mention this to reemphasize the promise of the Secretary's leadership agenda to ensure that this department remains fit for its purpose of building a safer, more secure, more prosperous world through global cooperation on all the challenges before us, whether rooted in politics or science. This all-encompassing mission of protecting America from any threat is and has always been our mission. We therefore honor today the 321 names memorialized on these walls and those others that we have lost but whose names remain unknown for their dedication to this mission, for their service, and for their sacrifice. We honor them in our ceremonies and in our moments of silence. And we honor them by our efforts to build on the good that they created there in their two short journeys. I would now like to ask the wreath bearer to place the wreath. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Secretary, for those meaningful remarks and for the department's continued dedication to the men and women of the Foreign Service. I express my heartfelt thanks to everyone who's able to join us here today, both in person and virtually. Epps and I appreciate your taking the time to honor your colleagues and join us on this day. Thank you. I'd be remiss in not also thanking the department staff and my own AFSA staff for putting this event together, this meaningful event. I appreciate all the hard work that was done today. So thank you. This concludes today's ceremony. Again, thanks for your participation.